Okay, so today we are solving absolute value equations. So what that means is that if you notice last class, we didn't actually have our absolute value expressions equal to anything, but now we're going to be working with things that have equal signs. Okay? So just like everything when we learned about quadratics and rational equations and everything, there's two ways to solve them. You can solve them graphically and algebraically. And so when we're solving them graphically, we basically do what we've always done. There's kind of two ways we can look at it graphically. The intersection method where we say, okay, everything on one side of the equal sign will be in Y1, and everything on the other side of the equal sign will be in Y2. So if you pull out your graphing calculator, okay, and so to find your absolute values on your graphing calculator, you hit math, so right here, and then you go one over to numbers, and then abs, ABS, means absolute values. So math, 1 over 1 for absolute values, okay? So, okay? so we go 2x plus 3, like that, and then in y2 I'm going to have 8. Because that's what they have as the example here. Then you hit graph. Okay, so you can draw this on your page. Oh, nope. Oh, dang it. Take a screenshot. Just like that. Okay, so if your graph looks like this, you shouldn't be talking, and if it doesn't look like this, you can put up your hand. Okay? It should be at 8, because this is y is equal to 8. Okay? Okay? So then you find your intercepts just like we have been doing for the past few months. So second trace intercept, enter, enter, enter. You find, oh, well, this one is at 2.5 and 8. Okay. And then you want to find the other one. So you go second trace intercept, and you move that all the way over. Enter, 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 and you get negative 5.5 and 8. That's true. Okay, so we get two solutions, negative 5.5 and 2.5. Okay, so the only thing really new that we've learned for this part is how to put absolute values in our calculator. Like solving for x using this is something we've been doing for a long time. Okay? So the other way we can do it graphically is by doing the x-intercept. So when you do that, you want to make everything in the equation equal to 0. So we've subtracted 8. And I always like to make my y2 equal to 0. So we'll go like this. Minus 8, y2 equal to 0. And then you just have to find your x-intercepts. Okay, so we'll go like that. Okay, okay. and then we go second trace second trace intercept, enter, 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 you go, oh, we have 2.5, which is good because it's the same equation, so we should get the same answers. Okay. 
Okay, and then we get to go all the way over to the other intercept. Okay, and then negative 5.5 and 0. Okay, so we go, okay, x is equal to negative 5.5 and 2.5. Okay, so it's your choice which way you want to do this graphically. So we're going to do example 1 and 2 together, or example 1, A and B together. So my personal preference is that if I have more than one term on either side, so like for example this one, that's when I'll go, okay, let's make this y1 and let's make this y2. So we'll go y1 is equal to the absolute value of 3 plus x. y2 is equal to 2x plus 1. And then we get something that looks like that. Nope. Because if you look at it on our equation, they just have it as normal. Okay. So you have a second trace intercept. Like that. And you get our intercept is x is equal to 2 and y is equal to 5. We get two and five. No. No, there's somewhere you're going to have to make your windows quite a bit bigger to see it. And yeah, it won't be like um, the rational equations where sometimes you couldn't even tell if they intersected or how many intercepts there were. You won't get any like that. Okay? So then for B. For myself personally, it's up to you, but when I see I only have one thing on the other side, that's when I'll go, okay, well, let's just go y1 is equal to the absolute value of x squared minus 17 minus 8, because it's just as easy to put minus 8 as it is to put it as two separate things. So I go absolute value of x squared minus 17, minus 8, make this equal to 0. So we get something that looks like that. Okay, and I'll just put that there, like that. Okay, and then you can find your intercepts just like we've been doing all along. So second trace intercept. Double check what you type in. Did you put your brackets in? That's a negative 17, not a minus 17. So we have four different intercepts, and I usually work from left to right just so I can keep myself organized. So we get negative 5, and then for the second one, second trace intercept. And we get negative 3 and 0. Here we'll find that we get positive 3 and 0. and a 5 and 0. So we get x is equal to positive or negative 3 and positive or negative 5. Okay? Second trace intercept. Are you moving your blinker? Remember, you have to move it close to where that intercept is. Second trace intercept. And then so you want to move it close like that. Oh, the way over there? 
Yeah. It's going to go to whichever one is closer. And you need something in your Y, too. Oh, come on. I have to find the intercept of something. Okay? So, that's all there is to it for solving it graphically. So, if this was a multiple choice question, I'd be looking at how to do it graphically, right? Okay. So, the other way of solving it is algebraically. So, if you flip the page over, we're going to go through this step by step together. So, like we said last day with our piecewise functions, like, there's two parts to these graphs, right? There's the positive side and then the side where it's been reflected across the x-axis. So the first thing we have to do is find how we split these sides up. So for our first step, you take what is inside the absolute value, only that, and you set it equal to 0, like that. And then you solve for x. So we'll go, okay, 2x is equal to negative 3 x is equal to negative 3 over 2. Okay. So that number is this one right here. So that's how we're going to split up what we call our subdomains. So we know in one subdomain, we have x is greater than or equal to negative 3 over 2. And in the other one, we have x is less than or equal to, or less than negative 3 over 2. So the next thing we get to do is we want to test it. So we go, okay, something that's greater than negative 3 over 2. Let's test maybe negative 1. Remember, we want to keep it as easy as possible. Okay? And then on the other side, something less than negative 3 over 2. So I'm going to test negative 2. Okay? So when we do that, all we do is we put this in for our 2x plus 3. So we go x is equal to negative 1. Yes. Okay, so negative 3 over 2 is like negative 1 half, right? And so something greater than negative 1 half, negative 1 would be farther right on the number line. If you want, we could use positive 1, if that makes more sense. You can use 0 as long as it's greater than negative 3 over 2. Okay? So then we go, okay, well, 2, negative 1, plus 3. So all we're doing is subbing it into this part here. Okay? And then we go, okay, well, that's negative 2 plus 3, which is equal to 1. So this here... It doesn't really matter what the value is. We're just looking for whether it's positive or negative. So we say, oh, it's positive. So we know that this is positive. And this is going to be our positive side. Okay. And we also want to test our other side. So we go x is equal to negative 2. We go 2, negative 2 plus 3. Negative 4 plus 3 is equal to negative 1. So we say, okay, this is negative which means this side is going to be negative. Okay? So our third step is to solve for this stuff. So we know because this side is the negative. Andrew, focus. So because we know this side is the negative, that's why we add this here. If we had found this side to be negative and this side to be positive, we would have put the negative sign on this one. Yeah. So we distribute the negative to everything like this. And this side we get to keep the same. So now we're working with our entire equation, not just what's inside the absolute value. And we get to solve for x. So we'll go, okay, negative 2x equal to 11. Then we go, okay, well, let's divide by negative 2. So 
Exactly. So we don't have to worry about inequalities at this point. Okay? And then on this side, we get 2x is equal to 5. And then we get 5 divided by 2. So after we've solved for the two values of x, the fourth step is to ask yourself, is this solution actually in the subdomain? Can we say, okay, is negative 11 over 2 less than negative 3 over 2? Let me see. Yes. Okay. Then they say, okay, is 5 over 2 greater than negative 3 over 2? Well, 5 over 2 is positive, so definitely. So we have two solutions, negative 11 over 2 and 5 over 2. Okay? So we'll do example 3 together. And this one they haven't even really started for us. This one was kind of nice because they started it for us. This one we get to do on our own. Remember, 